Hey guys and welcome back to a new Material 3 Expressive video. In this video we will get to the first new UI component that the new Material 3 Expressive extension brings. And that new component is called a split button and we see it right here. It is in the end a button that consists of two buttons. On the one hand a primary action like in this case edit and such a drop down arrow that when clicked will open a drop down menu with related actions to that one. So here in this case to editing. And if we take a closer look at what really happens here and how this works, then you can on the one hand see that our shape here morphs into a circle. So that is in general something that a Material 3 Expressive uh, very often plays with to actually change and animate the shape of certain elements. And if we take a look at this arrow, it actually rotates with an animation. And this exact setup here, we will now implement in code in Jetpack Compose for Android. What is maybe worth mentioning here is that this button can come in multiple sizes. So this size doesn't have to be exactly like that. But if we scroll down, you can see there are different types of allowed sizes. I did not yet find an easy way in Compose as of now when I record this video to easily set those sizes. So you can see there are five different sizes. Maybe I'm missing something or this will come in a later update because we, are, we still have to use the alpha dependency here at this point. So in Android Studio, in case you did not watch the, the last video, make sure that in your version catalog, you are using the Material 3 1.5.0 alpha dependency unless a later dependency is stable. But here you can again see what we will build in this video. So we have our edit button that we can click on. You can see also this shape animation here is baked into this component. And we have this drop down arrow that if we click it, it will animate and rotate. And here we see our drop down menu with related options to editing that we could click here. So let's see how we implement that. And for that, I will go to our root package where we already have this motion physics KT file from the last video. So watch that in case you've missed it. Since this is in fact a playlist about everything cool that has changed about Expressive. But I will create a new buttons package here for all new buttons Expressive brings. In here, we will create a split buttons composable. Yep, let me add that to Git. Make this a composable, call it split buttons. And in here, the way we have to implement this is via a so-called split button layout. That is a new composable that in the end lets us define this leading button. So that is the primary action. So here in this case, edit, and it lets us define this trailing button, which is this little arrow here. And the layout simply has the purpose to properly arrange these and position these two buttons with this little uh, spacing in between, implements and encodes all those defaults already that uh, the tier 3 guidelines say about this split button. So let's have our leading button composable. Let's have our trailing button composable. And we need to opt into this experimental API here as usual. Alt enter and therefore add this annotation here at the top. Starting with this leading button. And this is really something where you don't have to use an icon and a text together but you can also optionally just use the text. Just using an icon I don't think is encouraged, but using icon and text, that is something you can absolutely do as you can see here. So let's just replicate this layout that we have on the left here, but again, you're of course completely flexible what kind of primary action you want to show with this button here. So the leading button actually also comes with a predefined composable that is honestly a bit hard to find because it's not just a, a composable you can call here like leading button but you have to reference the split button defaults. So you may know this from Material 3, that for each a group of components, you have this defaults object in Kotlin that encodes all those defaults, like uh, default spacings, default corner roundings, default components, technically. We also have button defaults, for example, that encodes defaults about buttons, radio buttons, icon buttons, and so on. We want to use split button defaults. And here you can find those composables. So the leading button composable, for example, where we on the one hand can pass an on-click lambda and we can pass some content. And here we are actually instead of a row scope. So all the components we put in here in this content block will be arranged in a row-like fashion, like our pen icon here on the left and the text on the right. That means let's put an icon here, passing in an image vector. We sadly can't use icons anymore from Material 3, which was there previously. Sadly, they have removed that. So we need to add our icons manually in our resources folder by going to RAS, Drawable, right-clicking and adding a new vector asset. And here we now have this icon browse catalog where we can search for edit. Here is our edit icon. We can actually um, also choose the fill variant, which I think looks a bit better. Click OK, click Next. 
and then finish and we've added this icon here to our drawable folder and for some reason it doesn't add this automatically to github so let me uh, add this here manually but now we can reference this icon here directly in code by saying image vector dot vector resource this composable function here and here we can now link our just added icon we need to import r here from our own resources package here with your package name and we can then reference drawable and our baseline added 24. for the content description i will say null here normally you should of course pick something that describes the uh, what happens when clicked on this icon or what this icon describes well let's focus on the the actual visual aspect here in this video so we will have an icon next to that we will have a text where we say uh okay edit for example i think that's really already everything this text needs to implement let me already call this composable here in our main activity so we see what we're building here in this box that we've already added in the last video that centers the content by saying split buttons and if we then relaunch this we should already see the first part of our button so in the end just this leading button yep there we go you can see it looks very cramped because by default this leading button composable doesn't apply the necessary spacing between our icons and by default it also doesn't assign the right size to this icon because it doesn't know we're using an icon since it doesn't have that it doesn't have that as a separate layout slot so we need to do these two things manually on the one hand to give this icon a size and the right size we're going to give it a modifier that says modifier size and the size now actually comes from our defaults again so split button defaults so really just what material 3 has had in mind for this uh, icon size we can get this value here from leading icon size you can see we get a dp value that will uh, properly size our icon here and what we want is we want to have some spacing for that there is no default value in split button defaults so we just need to set this to 8 dp which is the right value according to the material 3 docs and then you can see this looks much better now but this so far is really just a button that is shaped a little bit weird we of course still want our drop down button and that is our trailing button so here we will also reference split button defaults and we use the trailing button composable now and you can by the way also see there are multiple variants of these the split button composable so you have elevated ones you can also say you're using an outlined one where, where this isn't filled with your primary color in case you don't want this to be so prominent and there is also a tonal trailing button but we will just use the completely normal trailing button that has this checked overload it is checked in case we've clicked it and the drop down is open so for that checked state we actually need to create a little compose state that we can toggle here by saying var check by remember and here we say initially that's false so mutable state of false alt enter to import this delegate here do this twice and then you can reference this checked state here in the button composable when this changes so when we click on this button then we can simply set this checked state to the new value so here we get it the new boolean whether we now uh, want to show the drop down or not and then this trailing button of course it needs an icon that we want to draw here and for that for this icon we again need to add new vector assets here in drawable right click new vector asset and this is called keyboard arrow down and up on the one hand here down we want to add that one finish and actually we are fine with just the down arrow because we will rotate it so we don't even need two icons here since that's by the way also what the material 3 guidelines say about this button this icon here for the secondary button for the trailing button should really always be this uh, drop down icon and should be used for a drop down menu and it should rotate this rotation is currently not implemented by default here maybe they add that in a future but i will show you of course how you can implement this manually so what we can say is we can have an additional icon just like above here here we don't need to define the size explicitly but we want to reference our icon the arrow down and if we then relaunch this here we should already see at least a visually correct button just like in my demo you can see here if we click it then when the checked state toggles then we have a round uh, button and uncheck it then it will kind of connect here with this other button however what is missing is on the one hand that we rotate this icon when we click it so when the checked state is true and on the other hand, we want to show a drop down and both of these things are luckily pretty simple on the one hand to rotate this icon we can define a little state here well rotation by animate float as state 
where we simply animate the uh, rotation degrees depending on what our checked state is. If it's checked, so if we are in this state here, then we're going to rotate this by 180 degrees. So we say 180F and otherwise 0F. Otherwise we leave, I'll leave it without any rotation. This value we can then assign here to this icon by saying modifier. A graphics layer can be used here to rotate an icon. And we say our rotation Z, so the Z axis, that is always the one that goes inside the screen. And that is what we're going to rotate around. So we set this equal to our animated rotation state. And if we relaunch this once more, then now our icon should properly rotate. So clicking this, that's exactly what happens. As you can see, looks pretty cool. So the last part is now actually showing the drop down menu. And that is luckily super simple. We just need to go below our component here and use our drop down menu composable. This has an expanded state. So when we want to show this drop down, which is of course, when our checked state is true. And this comes with an on dismiss request lambda. This is called when uh, the user taps outside the dropdown menu in order to set this state back to false, because then we want to dismiss it again and show this initial state. Here inside this dropdown menu, we can now use these dropdown menu item composables that will uh, just render as normal uh, dropdown menu items in the way it should look like. I would say we just have a little for loop here to show three items. So for i in one to three, we will show a drop down menu item where the text can simply be a text composable item and whatever index we're currently iterating over together with an on click lambda in which you could of course do something individual depending on the item. And I think that's really it. Let's relaunch this once more and take a look here. We click this button and there is our drop down. If we tap outside, well, then it toggles back to uh, unchecked and we can easily click these icons here. You could of course also set on clicked here to checked is false, dismiss the menu the moment the user clicks an icon, depending on a, a menu item, depending on what actually happens here. You can see now it actually dismisses and animates out uh, the moment we click this. This is by the way also something where you can now perfectly see how these animations that we've covered in the last video are integrated into these components already because in this video, we really did not have to define any sort of animation except for this uh, rotation, but not any sort of expressive animation. We did not need to think about, uh, do we use the expressive or the standard uh, motion scheme here? But that's all baked into these components here already. Still, the moment you are defining your own animations, then you need to know how this new motion scheme works for that, in case you've missed it, watch the last video. Now, another type of new component will be button groups. That is what will come in the next video. And if you like these videos and you want to learn with our premium content, then down below you'll find a link to our website, premium courses, mentorship program, gamified communities to learn Android and mobile development. Check it out. And other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye. Thank you.